All right, okay. It's just a chat. Yeah. It's <laughs> promo. Lift up my hands and lift up my voice and sing up. We'll turn to you. Look in your face, my Jesus, you are my king. I will turn to you. Shake off my past and surrender everything. Because when it comes to forever, there's one way that I'm heading. I'll turn to you. Hello, all, and welcome to our focus series. Today we'll be focusing on Christchurch Manchester music. Please do not forget to like and subscribe if you're on our YouTube channel and also give us a little thumbs up on Instagram as well. And we are currently with Dana, who is also a member of our church here at Christchurch Manchester. Hi Dana, how are you doing? Hey and I'm good, Tom. I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions because I hear you have a new single coming out. That is correct. Coming out next week. So please, please tell me a bit about yourself and how you came to Christchurch Manchester. Sweet. So my name is Dana, as Ian said. Um, I attend the CCM Gorton site. And I came to Manchester when I was a student, but I didn't actually, no offence to Ian or anyone else, <laughs> I didn't actually join. Um, I didn't choose to be become a part of um, CCM until after uni. Um, whilst I was at uni, I was reading and learning a lot about um, kind of missional communities yeah. and being um, really intentional with where you live and being, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, being Christ in the area that you choose to live. And so when I finished uni that's what I wanted to do mm. I really um loved the Eden project um oh yeah and, yeah and what that was about but didn't really feel that I could commit to what what you know Eden was after being like fresh out of uni not knowing where my yeah was yeah school. but when I looked online um I found out that CCM Gorton Christchurch Manchester Gorton um was kind of connected to um an Eden project and so came checked it out and <laughs> everything just kind of it just made sense i loved the church i loved that what they were about um and so that's how i came to be a part of christchurch manchester when did you start like getting into music and like just in general and what what are some of your like inspirations oh the mother-in-law to my um, old vicar and um from my church in london and she was one of the like the nursery um, like assistants at my nursery and she would come in pat big up pat gma we love her um she would come in with her guitar and strum the like three four chords that she knew and she would <laughs> sing with her sweet sweet little voice nice and um and i'd sing along with her and i just love it and then when her son-in-law came um became the um, vicar at my church and she you know joined the church as well she, yeah. that was it she got me singing everything all the time um so I definitely put down my love of singing and yeah. being like comfortable singing down to her. Um, but music was just always about as well. Like mum, mum mm. loves a Motown banger. Um, yeah. So I was always playing Motown songs growing up. I just had like so much good music around me. Mum's favorite genre of music growing up was actually country music. Wow. So I heard so much country music and the harmonies in country music are just phenomenal. Um, so Yes, music was always around me. Um, I was hearing lots of harmonies, which I think has really influenced me a lot now. Mm. Um, and I love to sing because of Pat. We love Pat. Nice. Yeah, we definitely do. Um, so <laughs> where, like, where would you say that your heart is for worship music today? Oh, um, when I think about people and the different <laughs> cultures and... Um, yeah, people that I see around me, I just see so much difference. And I'd love to yeah. see that um, in people's expression of worship, in um, in the songs that are used to help people worship, just through the whole worship experience. And I'd also love to see, like, our worship times really impact our lives as well. Like, I, I don't ever want it to just be like a happy little singer, sing song. Yeah. When we go out and we're the same people. Um, okay. It has, worship has to mean more than just the four minutes of singing that you know that the, that song does um, yeah so that kind of brings me on to talk about your latest single turn yes. um it suddenly becomes 
quite difficult for me to say in a Scottish accent because it therefore becomes two syllables. I turn to you. No, not really. <laughs> I, <laughs> I probably wouldn't sing it in a Scottish accent. I wondered if you could tell me a bit about um, just why you kind of identify yourself uh, musically as Coco Clark and kind of where that comes from. Cool. So my full name, my government name, is Dana Coco Nicole Springer Clark. Um, Whoa, yeah, it's nice. A good, it's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of it. And so, um, Coco Clark uh, is my second name and the second part to my surname. So it definitely is still fully me. Um, but they're almost parts of me that feel. Um, a bit more separate to the me that I walk around yeah. the Dana that I walk around or even the Dana Springer that I walk yeah, around I that. as most days that part can just mm. be free um but yeah. all while it's still being totally a part of who I am no I get that I totally understand that I think um it's always good to kind of identify something in a way and sort of um give you a time and energy to I know for me like my name Ian Watson kind of sounds like a newsreader and I think there is a newsreader called Ian Watson so please please tell me uh, where you kind of got the inspiration to write this song and just like why you wrote it so this song um I was actually I actually had a couple of friends staying with me at the time Dan and Fallon they used to attend TCM big up to them we love them we actually love really Dan. do love them um, yeah we actually do <laughs> And we were having just one of our many kind of conversations about music and um, the different types of music that we love. And I just left that conversation feeling really inspired. Um, and so I was just like running through things in my, in my brain. And I was in my kitchen, um, washing up dishes, which I do once a week if I have to. I'll have a random thought and then I'll kind of freestyle it into something. And it just felt like a, a vibe really. Yeah. Um, and so I had, I, the chorus was the first thing that I had down, but I was so, there was nothing in me that thought I would write this for um, yeah. Christchurch, Manchester, nothing. Okay. I thought it would be either one of the many things that I write and just lock away in a box and it mm. just, nothing comes of it. Or I feel that. that I could um, give it to something else that I'm a part of that kind of performs for young people and yeah. um, in young Christian spaces. I thought that, that form, that style um, will work way more for that than it could in a kind of, I don't know, Christchurch Manchester style. Yeah, worship. yeah. Um, I had a writing session with Mike, Michael, mm. and he was like, so what have you, what have you got? What, what thoughts have you ha had? And term was just on, on my mind. Um, I was just like, oh, I, can't, I can't share it with him. There was just no way, this is not, <laughs> This is not the Christchurch Manchester thing. Mm. Mike, being the energetic American that he is, was like, yeah, yeah. oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> just going crazy. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sick. And I actually had, um, was it Tom in the room with me that day? No, we had another guy in, in the room and, and he was just like really cool. I think his name's Jacob. He's, he was really cool. Oh, like, yeah. from Brightline. From Brightline, yes. Yeah. He was just like vibes in with it. And it's yeah. like, everyone was getting excited. And I was like, oh, okay oh, maybe, maybe it is okay for this space. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I've spoken to you before about um, kind of repentance and the, the act of turning yeah. to God. Mm. It's, that's such a huge thing for us as Christians. Like we, should, we have to do that daily, hourly, like choosing to turn to God, choosing to repent of, um, of all manner of things. Yeah. Um, but that's not something that I see a lot in, in Christian music, definitely not in worship music no. um you know god is is the only one that can do a whole bunch of things and so we actually we have to choose to turn to him i find it really helpful like when you're talking yeah. about repentance being this huge big word mm. um like what does it even mean well it can look like just literally turning lifting your yeah, hands yeah. up to him lifting your voice to him um looking in his face and declaring that he is your king yeah and just talking to uh, mike lowell who um is the executive producer for Christchurch Manchester Music. And um, he kind of told me that during the writing process for Turin, um, you guys 
well, especially you, like you had such strong ideas that when you came in, uh, you were very clear about what you liked and what you didn't like. And, and sort of musically, he said that just makes his job so much better because he can therefore have this like vision for whatever your vision is for. Like, what is it that makes you think, okay, this is what I want. This is how I want it to sound. Is that something that you're inspired by at the moment? Or is it like, maybe like on a, a kind of more general scale? Like, have you always kind of had strong ideas? Hmm. Yeah, I think, well, Mike's great because he, how he is and how I am, I think it works well together. So he will, he will chuck out like random ideas and he'll be totally okay if you just say no to that, no, hell no to that. Yeah. Um, like he's so happy. He's really happy for the no's, as happy as he is for like the yeses. And yeah. for me, I often need a bunch of ideas to have like a response to them. So then I can mm. figure out what I think and feel. When it comes to music, I want to have that, I want to have a bass face, you know, have that mm, kind of mm. in my face. I want to yeah. feel like I want to move in my body. Um, mm. And so when it comes to like sounds um, and rhythms, that's always what I'm kind of looking for and leaning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think what I love about the track though is the kind of straight away, I just feel like um, musically, there's these kind of lines that create worship music culture. And um, this track completely destroys that for me, which you have no idea how much I love. I just feel like this song for me, like when I first heard it, I was like, yes, okay, great. Okay, I'm excited now. Like I was only like 20 seconds in and I was like, yeah, I know, I know what she's doing. I know what she's doing. And I was just so excited to hear something that, um, well, yeah, just isn't like, it's just not normal to hear. Like, and I love that. Um, I think it's important and I think we should make that uh, part of our society part of our culture to to just make stuff that we love doing in order to worship yeah. god and do you have anything else in the pipeline um and what does that kind of look like Ooh. well okay so christchurch manchester wise turn actually we've got um a remix coming out mm. um yeah so that's you do. Actually Yes, we do. That was mm. um, actually done by Dan. I mentioned him before, um, yeah. Dan Terry and his brother. So that will be coming out the week after. Um, and that's, that's the exciting. drum and bass remix, which is like, I'm super excited about. So for a lot of people, they're like, why, why are they even doing this video? Why are we saying it's a new release? We've all heard Turn before. It was released in December. Okay, smart people, you're correct. But it has been remixed, remastered. Um, and so the version of Turn That will be released next week. Actually, I think is, can I, I'm going to say it. I think it's better than the one we released before because all of those textures and um, sounds and stuff, that you, I think they just have all been risen up a bit more. And when I'm mm. listening to them, um, different things poke out more than they did in the previous one we did. So shouts to Mike for that. Um, yes. But also on Dan's version on the remix, I, I hear the harmonies in a new way. Um, I've personally heard the remix and I must say, I mean, I love drum and bass music. I love the, the kind of 90s sounds. I love like anything from that period. Um, but I, I heard it and, and to be honest, I was a bit sort of skeptical about it. I didn't know how good Dan and his brother was. And um, he'd, he'd sent me a sort of rough copy of it. And even that sort of rough copy, I was like, I could listen to this right now. Like every, yeah, yeah. like all the time, like it was just perfect. And, and the way it matched with your vocals and everything, it was just like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be great. I can't, I can't wait for that. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. I'm also just excited that we're, we're trying out new things as a church and, and um, yeah, that we're definitely open to that kind of culture. Just to say that Turn, uh, the official single from Coco Clark, uh, will be released on Monday the 6th of July, which is this Monday coming. And the very special remix um, will be out the week after so please keep your eyes peeled for that um, but you can help us a lot just by liking and sharing our posts um, because we need them views and um, yeah so thank you so much Coco Clark and um, Stroke Dana and then um, I can't wait to catch up with you soon yes <laughs> speak soon <laughs> mm.
Dobře, děkuji. Děkuji.